ومن الناس من يعبد الله على حرف فإن أصابه خير نطمأن به وإن أصابته فتنة انقلب على وجهه خسر الدنيا والآخرة ذلك هو الخسران المبين And among men there is one who worships Allah, standing, on the verge. So if some good thing happens to him, he is satisfied with it. And if a trial befalls him, he turns his face back. He loses both this world and the hereafter. That is the manifest loss. <laughs> He prays to someone, instead of Allah, who can neither harm him nor benefit him. That is the error that takes him too far from the right path. He He, rather, prays to someone whose harm is more likely than his benefit. Wretched is such a patron and wretched is such a companion. So these three verses are talking about a person in time of Prophet's life. They would move into Medina, a nearby area, and um, those who are getting benefit, they get blessing, they get prosperous, they get family and animal livestock increment and financial strength and improvement like when they lived in Medina. So they were very happy with it. And there are some of them who lost health or become sick or lost financial strength or their livestock and whatnot or their family, people died being in Medina. They thought they have lost Uh, they are in the loser state uh, be after believing. So they said they wanted to leave Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to this. Those who leave Islam and start going to idol worshipping, which really doesn't do anything. It's a very common sense thing today. Intelligent person can understand without much intellect that uh, it's object which you made with your own hand. How could that be a God? And God's attribute is that he is the creator of you, not you are creator. So when we create those things, it means those deities, those handcrafted structure and body and wood carved structures are not God. And if you ask them, will God look like that? Is God like that? And they say, yes, we believe, we think that God's face is like that. God has a hand. And that is where Muslim says, God has no physical body. God is beyond our imagination. And this is his attribute. God is everywhere and anywhere in whatever way he wants to manifest himself but he is not the structure which you are worshiping and if you get something from any asking from any non-godly being it as a muslim we ask for help for non-godly being knowing that this is not god you can ask for assistance and help and and be friendly with them but you cannot worship them and worship is only for allah We cannot sacrifice for anybody, even Prophet Muhammad, we cannot worship. That is forbidden to worship any other than God, for that's the Islamic final thing which has no compromise. And Prophet Muhammad is to be loved and respected, and we can ask for antecedents by the pious person or good people, ask for everybody that pray for me and my family, but we cannot worship them. That is the main thing here has been mentioned. Let's listen to the attributes of those who will be entering the paradise and what will their reward be. Surely Allah will admit those who believe and do good deeds into gardens beneath which rivers flow. Surely Allah does what he intends. Allah 
فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ فَلْيَمْدُدْ بِسَبَبٍ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ لْيَقْطَعْ فَلْيَمْدُدْ بِسَبَبٍ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ لْيَقْطَعْ فَلْيَنْظُرْ هَلْ يُذْهِبَنَّ كَيْدُهُ مَا يَغِيرُ If someone thinks that Allah will never help him, the Prophet, in this world and in the hereafter, he should stretch a rope to the sky, then cut Allah's communication off from the Prophet and see whether his effort can really remove what irritates him. And <laughs> And this is how we have sent it, the Quran, down as clear signs, and the fact is that Allah leads whom he wills to the right path. At in so verse 14, 15 and 16, they are talking and addressing that indeed Allah will enter the people of belief and the action. So when we believe we have to perform what is five times prayer without exemption, unless a person is unconscious or sick enough that he cannot remember or young enough or old enough. Uh, consciousness is to be there. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising that he will enter them into the paradise under which the rivers are flowing. And Allah does whatever he wills. Whatever. In Allah yaf'alu ma yurid. When Allah wills something or the intent, he just said it to be and it happens and that's what he does. If he wants to forgive somebody, he will. He wants to punish somebody, he will. Man kana yadunno an lan yansuruhu Allah fi dunya wal akhirah. So, if someone thinks, you know, these people who said you're not the real prophet and you're not the messenger of God and Allah will not help you, as the Jews and Christian would blame or claim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, in the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always helpful to the prophet and the believers. And in hereafter will be. Uh, that person, Allah is giving an example, should he, uh, you know, uh, tie a rope from the sky or from the up ceiling and uh, then cut off. Uh, and see what, whatever his efforts can really remove or uh, whatever it irritates. So basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling this person then go hang yourself if you don't believe in my prophet. And this is how we have sent this clear manifest signs. on Allah yahdi man yurid. And Allah guides whoever so he will. So prophet was eager to have people be guided. Allah saying no, I will guide whoever I will. So don't need to bother yourself, don't need to worry. Your job is to convey the message and people's job is to accept and reject the message and I will deal with those who deny you and reject you. Verse number 17. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالصَّابِئِينَ وَالنَّصَارَى وَالْمَجُوسَ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْصِلُ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٌ as for those who believe in the Jews and the Sabians and the Christians and the Magians and those who ascribe partners to Allah, Allah will judge between them on the day of judgment. Surely Allah is witness to everything. <laughs> وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالنُّجُومُ وَالْجِبَالُ وَالشَّجَرُ وَالدَّوَابُ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ وَكَثِيرٌ حَقَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَذَابِ وَمَن يُهِنِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِن مُكْرِمٍ إِنَّ اللَّهَ have you not seen that to Allah? Prostrate all those in the skies and all those on the earth, and the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the trees, the animals and many from mankind? And there are many on whom punishment has become due, and the one whom Allah puts to disgrace, there is none to give him respect.
Surely Allah does what he wills. So verse number 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing those who believe, means Muslim, and those who are Jews, and those who are a stargazer, the follower of John the Baptist, peace be upon him, and the Nasara, the Christian, the Majus, the fire worshipper, which is Zoroastrian, and those who made partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a judgment about them on the day of judgment. And in Allah ala kulli shay'in shaheed. Indeed, Allah is witness on everything what we do. Next verse 18 is a very beautiful verse. It describes a lot of things which we have question about. Like if we say that, okay, everything is Muslim, what is their way of worshipping and what not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing. Did you not see, O beloved Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all the mankind? Everything which is in the nature or existence is prostrating to Allah. Man fil samawati wa man fil Whatever is in the skies and whatever is in the earth means all the galaxies, all the skies. There are seven skies. Or each and every one has its own existence of being whatever they are is by the will of Allah. And all the earth, all the planets, all the galaxies, all the stars. Was shams the stars, wal qamar the all the moons and the planets, wal najum and the galaxies, wal jibal and the mountains, was shajr and the trees and the plantation, wal dawab and all the walking and craw crawling creature, kasirum min nas and many among the men of the creation of the mankind, wa kasirun haqqa alihi azab and many are worshiping who have been already destined to be in the punishment. They are all praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever been dishonored and disgraced by Allah, nobody can give that being honor. In Allah Yafalumayasha, Allah indeed does whatever He wills. So what is the way of worshipping Allah? This is the words of Sajda. So after listening to this verse, one should perform prostration. So that is other than that, but every time when we read it, one time, multiple times when we read it, we only have to do at least one time a prostration on this. So uh, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing what is the worship of the birds flying with the spread out wings and all the plants and the trees. The shadow of those trees is their prostration and the word is subhanallah. They all the birds when the wings spread out, they're flying, they are attacking. We see that they are attacking. We see all the creatures, the four-legged, the two-legged, the crawling and the creeping and the swimming and oceanic creature. Every creature is saying subhanallah. Human are, and jinn are the two creatures which are given free will. But this free will, we are being given an option whether we believe or not. And then, kasirum haqqa alihi azab, even though those we are worshipping, and the azab, punishment is being ordained for them, and they are going through this hardship. Whoever been dishonored, nobody can bring honor to this person. Indeed, Allah does whatever He please. So we have to be understand, and we have to say, we have the answer that what is the worship and form of worship. So this is why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, says Subhanallah all the time. That is the glory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, Jannah, the paradise is flat ground, the grassy ground. Every time you say subhanallah, Allah plants a tree for you. So say subhanallah all the time. And listen to the verse number 19. <laughs> These are two opponents who have disputed about their Lord. As for those who disbelieve, garments from fire shall be tailored for them, and boiling water shall be poured from over their heads. Whereby everything in their bellies, as well as the skins, will be melted. And for them there are hook rods of iron. Whenever, in their anguish, they will intend to come out of it, the fire, they will be turned back to it, and, it will be said to them, taste the punishment of burning.
In verse number 19 through 22, four verses is very detailed description and very kind of candid description of what will be the punishment for one of the two, the one who, who speak for the God and one who is against the God and disputed in the matter of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, and as also who disbelieve there will be a garment of fire. Just imagine how tailored a garment of fire would be. Just imagine. We cannot imagine this way, but then our bodies will be able to wear a dress of fire, which will be cut and tailored for those people who are disbelievers. And a boiling water to be poured over their head. Just imagine, one whole body is burning with fire and the hot water is poured over them. And then that it is for them there is hooked iron. Uh, whereby everything in their bellies as well as their skin will be melted. So body and the skin and this internal content will be melted and they will be re recreated. And they will be coming back and they will be hooked iron. They will be hammers, iron, iron sledgehammer will be there to hit their body with those. So this is, will be the punishment of the disbeliever who deny God and who fight against God for the believers. And then further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullama aradu an minha. After they will intend after such a punishment they get out of the hellfire, they will be forced back and they will be told that taste the fire what you used to deny for the God Almighty. Verse number 23 and onwards. Inna Allah yudkhilu alladheena amanu wa amilu salihati jannat jannat tajri min tahtiha al-anhar yuhallawna fiha yuhallawna fiha min asawira min Surely Allah will admit those who believe and do good deeds to gardens beneath which rivers flow. They will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold and with pearls, and their dress therein will be of silk. <laughs> إلى الطيب من القول وهدوء إلى صراط الحميد. Guided they were to the good word of faith, and guided they were to the path of Allah, the praised one. إن الذين كفروا ويصدوا so verse number 23 and 24 are talking about those who believe and did the righteous deeds. You see, there's nowhere Allah says Iman and believe alone. It says Amal as salihat the righteous deed, which it says 5% of the 100 part is 5 part is the worship. 95 part, 95% 95 is the dealing with the people above us, parents, grandparents, downside, children, grandchildren, right side, the spouse and the family, left side, the friends and the contacts, and front and back is the acquaintances and job and world which is around us, the nature. So this is the 360 circle surrounding us. That is 95% we have to deal every day. So all ultimate thing is the belief in Allah and the messenger of Allah and being a Muslim and having Islam and then doing all these will be counted for in the worldly time and the hereafter. Those who do spend in the path of Allah in the world, they get reward in the world. And Allah does not take anybody's debt and loan. He always pays back. And then in the hereafter, their deeds are being counted and multiplied by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the reward. Always when Quran talk about the punishment, it talks about the reward. And you talk about the hellfire, talk about the believer. So, and the, and the paradise in Jannah. Let's listen to the verse number 25. Again, Quran is talking about disbeliever. Inna alladheena kafaru wa yasudduna an sabeelillahi wal masjidil haram alladhi ja'alnahu linnaas wal masjidil haram alladhi ja'alnahu linnaas sawaan al-aakif fihi wal baad وَمَنْ يُرِدْ فِيهِ بِإِلْحَادٍ بِظُلْمٍ نُذِقُهُ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا لِإِلْحَادٍ 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about indeed those who did the denial to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an sabilillah and stopped the believers from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Masjid al Haram, they stopped them from entering the Masjid. And we have made this for the mankind to come and the resident and the local and the traveling people to come and do their staying there or etikaf, well bad, the local and the traveling. Had and whoever wishes intend therein to commit deviation with injustice, they will be provided and punished with the or the taste the punishment of the hellfire. So, anybody who stop people entering for the masjid for the act of worship, they should not be allowed to because God made masjid for the mankind, not for any country. Today, you see there's a country named under a man named Saudi Arabia that is the biggest of the bidah and haram. And these worshippers of those people who are following them, they are actually disobedient to God. Prophet did not name the country under his name. The country was made or the land is made under God's name. So people should be mindful of that.